everybody, my name is Judy Ko from Creative Culinary and today I'm happy to be able to share with you some the recipe to make delicious espresso cheese tarts. Now first, I'm going to show you how to make the tart base. Unlike the ordinary tart base, this tart base, I use a chocolate tart base. And for the chocolate tart base, these are the following ingredients. We have Anchor Unsalted Butter. Now, Anchor Unsalted Butter has a very light, creamy taste and it's from the cows that roam freely in New Zealand, you know, eating the grass and they are grass fed, basically. And so you see the color of the butter is a slightly more yellow because of the chlorophyll from the grass. Now, first, I'm going to place the butter slightly softened so that it's easier to cream into my mixing bowl. Now, I'm using a slightly larger mixing bowl. Otherwise, if you are making these at home, you can use a handheld machine. That's also fine. Now, here I've got butter and I have some icing sugar. Now, icing sugar contains some cornstarch in it to prevent it from clumping. Now, what I do is I cream the butter and the icing sugar till it's quite light. Now here I've got my paddle, so I'm going to fit my paddle into the mesh. Okay, so I will start to cream. Okay. We start at low speed first, okay? Uh, otherwise, if we start at high speed, everything flies into our faces. Okay, I know it's common sense, huh? but sometimes common sense isn't that common, right? So anyway, uh, butter and icing sugar we cream until it's uh, quite light. Now how long it takes to cream really depends on the amount and the softness of the butter. So to make it easier, it's actually better to take the butter out and leave it on the counter till it's slightly softened but not melted. Okay, so I cream the butter and the icing sugar. Now, other, other ingredients that I have are two yolks, some plain flour, and cocoa butter. Okay, so this is uh, dark cocoa powder that I'm going to just add into it. Alright. Okay, so let's just do this first. Now, these tart bases can be done ahead of time. So, uh, when you're ready to make them, the dough can also be put into the freezer for several weeks and when you want to use it, just remove from the freezer, pour a little bit and it's ready to go. All right. Another way is to make these tart shells, bake them ahead of time, place them in containers and keep it in the refrigerator. So that will make your production a lot easier. Okay, so I've got my butter and icing sugar here. So alright, it's almost ready now. So let me just show you what it looks like. Okay, this my you see. Now look at my butter. Okay, so with a gentle flick, okay, the butter sort of drops okay a little bit more. So if you, if it's not gentle enough, okay, so we, it should be gently. Uh, when you flick, it should actually drop off from there. So I have to cream a little bit more. Now, creaming makes the pastry a little bit lighter. So uh, remember, don't cream till it melts. Okay? So there I go. Cream again a little bit more. So take a little bit of time, okay? So we'll just take the time to cream it. All right, now it's almost done now. The color will start to get lighter, okay? And uh, okay, now this should be okay now. If you take a look at the butter. Okay, so I've got my butter here. Okay, so you can see it's lighter now. Sort of when it sort of drops under the bowl like this. Okay, so it's okay. 
and then I can add in my egg yolks. Now, and carefully in my egg yolks. Now you don't have to discard your egg whites because if you wish to keep the tart shell a little crisp a little bit longer, the moment is it bakes. Uh, the moment the baking is done, when the tarts are already baked, while it is hot, you can dip a pastry brush into the remaining egg white and just quickly brush the insides of the pastry shell and then put it back into the oven for just maybe a few seconds to set it. Now that acts like a so-called waterproof and uh, not really waterproof, you know, it sort of prevents or uh, this curry uh, prevents the, the tart from getting too soft too quickly from the moisture that is in the filling. Okay, so this is just a tip, all right? It's optional, but uh, that can help you a little bit, okay? Okay, now once the yolks are already added, okay, I'm going to add in the plain flour. Now, you can just simply put all the flour into it the mixing bowl at one go and also include the cocoa powder okay and once this is done make sure it's on very low speed again otherwise everything flies into our faces okay so just mix it bit of time at first it looks a little bit dry but give it a, a bit of time to bind the mixture together all right here the mixture is here now and it's ready to be used okay you don't really have to chill the dough unless it's really too soft okay so uh, make sure that it's well mixed now you can keep it in the bag for example like this you can just keep it into the same bag flatten it and uh, if you don't want to use this ahead of time you can flatten the dough uh, and then keep it in the refrigerator now flattening the dough uh, helps the cold to get into the dough quickly especially if you are freezing the dough and also for another practical reason if you were to keep it frozen and when you want to use it you take it out from the freezer it takes a short while to thaw so that makes it more efficient when you are working with it okay and keeps it very clean and very hygienic okay in, in the now since I'm not going to store it now I can use it uh, immediately now I've got some tart shells here so what you do is you can pinch a little bit of this of the dough alright and if it sticks to your fingers you can just dip in a little bit of flour and just simply press the dough into the tart shells okay like this alright okay and you can just simply Okay, use your thumb to do this. Okay, another way is to just simply push this in. The same thing, the fingers, push it in. Now, one recipe will give you about 10, one and a half inch uh, uh, tarts. Okay, but if you're going to do this like a thousand pieces a day, can you imagine how numb your finger will be? All right. So when in large scale production, for example in our bakery, when we have to make a lot of tarts, what we will do is to sheet it up in a sheeter or use a rolling pin, roll it up and we use a cutter to cut circles of the dough and we place it onto the, uh, onto the baking uh, container so it's a little bit faster. Now, if you don't want to use your thumb to just do it, another way is to just simply use of a 
of a pallet knife or any knife just okay just cut the sides here so that it's neat and nice okay one more piece all right so this is actually quite relaxing uh, while you are chatting with your family or, or washing in uh, you can just simply you know feel the dough like this and then just press it around like this so simple to do okay so all right well, then just simply cut it out like this okay and there you have it okay don't make the the tart dough too thick or too thin what's important is to make sure it's even now there is a tendency for us to make this inside here a little bit thicker so make sure that it is thin and even but not too thin and then it breaks okay this takes a little bit of practice and it will take a little bit of time uh, in in certain uh, mass production uh, these cut doughs are even stamped into uh, the baking containers so for automated uh, processes but then okay so if you are doing at home of course uh, you will need to do this okay take a little bit of time take some patience and when you have completed it just Bake it in a preheated oven. Now preheat your oven at about 160 degrees to 170, um, depending on your oven. And it's very important that when you want to bake something, always try to understand your oven. Some ovens bake a little bit faster, bake a little bit hotter. So get to know your oven a little bit more. Now. What's important is to preheat your oven. Turn your oven to about 160 degrees, top heat, bottom heat. Now, home ovens, usually there's an indication. Here in my bakery, I have a big oven. So this has already been preheated. And what we do is we place them on baking trays and then we bake it for about uh, 12 to about 15 minutes, okay? Now, depending on on your oven all right so we just simply bake it all right like this and you bake um, okay 12 to 15 minutes now if the cuts are big they should come off from the cut shell easily now, if it is not properly baked then you have a problem in it, it will just get stuck into the uh, baking containers notice we don't bother to uh, brush the, the containers with oil or anything because the dough itself has got butter and so that should be should allow the tart dough to release from the container easily if it's not then probably it's not cooked so you cook a little bit longer so always try to understand your oven because they cook sometimes at a different uh, rate I mean, uh, you, you know, some ovens take a little bit longer, some take a little bit shorter, so understand your oven a little bit more. Now, then what we do is, once uh, they are baked, okay, I've got some already pre-baked. You can see once they are baked, alright, you see it releases quite easily, okay. So these tart shells have already been baked and you see when it's baked, it should come off easily. If it doesn't come off easily, don't try it. Try it out. It means that you probably have to return to the oven a little bit longer. Okay, so these are just some of the tart shells that we baked. Now for the interesting part, and that's the filling for the tart. Now for the filling, I use Anchor cream cheese. Now I love the taste of this because it's rich and creamy, and it gives a very satisfying feel when you eat it. I use a lot of this in the cheesecakes that we sell at our cafe and um, again the color of the cream cheese is a little bit more yellow because of the chlorophyll uh, from, uh, from the grass that the cows eat um, uh, from where we get the, the cream, the milk and the butter. Okay so anchor butter and milk has got a nice beautiful color as well as a rich creamy taste now what we have over here would be uh, first the cream cheese and for the cream cheese we also have got sugar all right 
So I'm going to just get some of these uh, ready. Uh, now then we also have got Couverture chocolate. Uh, this chocolate should be melted in uh, either over a double boiler or you can melt it in the microwave. Okay, so uh, be careful when you melt it in the microwave, you really need to ensure that you don't overheat it, otherwise, the chocolate might burn. Alright, so there I have a microwavable bowl, and I'm going to just put it over here. First, I just get it ready and okay so my mixing bowl is here now I've got a little bit of the tart dough here so let me just um, make sure that uh, I remove some of the tart dough so into here so I don't have any too much of a wastage and then this can be used again okay Now the great thing about making stuff for your family or loved ones is that because you personally make it for them to enjoy and I'm sure your family and loved ones will love you know the effort that you put in now to make something delicious always put your heart into what you make and also importantly use premium ingredients all right choose the right ingredients um, all right, make sure that you've got the right stuff, measure your ingredients carefully. With a little bit of patience, you'll be able to come up with uh, very delicious stuff, okay? So now, first, I'm going to put my cream cheese into my mixing bowl. So this is anchor cream cheese, and I'm going to put in my sugar here, okay? And then, I'm going to cream it, okay? Just gently cream it. a little bit uh, less sturdy than your pedal so I'm going to just cream it a little bit more. Put on low to medium speed. Okay, so I like cream first. And I also have got two eggs. Okay, two eggs. So while I'm creaming, I will just start to okay, crack the eggs into the bowl. Sometimes it's good to just uh, crack the eggs into a bowl first so that uh, in case you break some of the eggshell and it actually gets into a mixture, it can just get mixed up but in the bowl it's visible so you can easily remove from the bowl when you uh, need it. Okay, so I'm going to clean this. Now while it's creaming, I am going to pop my chocolate into the microwave just for a short while. Okay, this is my uh, chocolate that's been melted. Now, when you put it into the microwave, be careful not to burn it, as I said earlier. Uh, and you will know that it's already melted when you have, like it looks a little bit shiny like this. Okay, put it onto low setting. Another way is to put it into uh, a bowl, okay, a metal bowl. Make sure there's no water in a metal bowl. Uh, heat up a, a pot of uh, water. The water should not be touching the base of the, of the metal bowl. And just place the chocolate over it and melt gently, okay? Now chocolate is very sensitive to heat, so don't overheat it, all right? Otherwise, uh, it might get burnt, so it uh, becomes very grainy as well. Okay, so now, okay. My cream cheese is ready like this. Okay, you see the cream cheese is softer, so I can add an, an egg, one egg first. Okay, put it in and cream it until it's evenly mixed. Okay. 
At this point, you can increase the speed a little bit more so that you can mix uh, uh, smoothly. Okay, so then I'm going to add in another one. Egg. Once you see the eggs has been mixed properly, okay, as in you see that it's mixed well. All right. Now stop the machine. Occasionally, you might have to scrape the sides of the of the bowl. Okay, stop the machine. Scrape the sides of the bowl down so that you get all the cream cheese uh, down to the mixture like this. Now at this point, you can either use a spoon and scoop into uh, the, the big hard shell. Another faster way would be for me to put it into a piping bag. Uh, you get lots of this kind of piping bag from ingredient store. Otherwise, you can also use uh, like the side, uh, like the ziplock bag. You can fill it up with it. Ziplock. I mean, just tighten it. And then hold it at one corner, cut, uh, uh, you know, make a, a cut here, and then it can be used like a modified kind of piping bag. All right. Since I'm uh, um, okay, um, I work in the bakery, so I have my piping bag already. Now you can basically hold your piping bag in this manner. Okay, do it in this manner, like this. Or if you find that this hard to manage. Another way is to get hold of a like a, a taller jug like this, okay, and you can place it here like this. Put it over the rim. Uh, put the plastic over the rim of your jug, and then that frees your two hands to do what is necessary, like this. So make sure. scissors make a cut maybe about uh, 1 cm across make sure the cut uh, is inside this and hold it twist it so that it doesn't come off and if you watch closely what I do is that I hold my piping back and then I fill up the tart shells okay so just do it until like this and Okay, it's always more efficient uh, if you place them not too far away, the dark shell, so you can work fast. Okay, like this. And okay, etc, etc. And you can just 
knock it a little bit to even out the filling okay arrange it so that there's it will there will be some heat circulating around the touch shells and at the same temperature of 160 degrees bake it for about 12 to 15 minutes till it's just set okay when you shake the tart uh, the cream cheese filling doesn't wobble okay so that will take a little while so again i've got some that's already pre-baked and you can see once it's done okay you can see um, okay and uh, it's actually done but i'm going to decorate it a little bit more with more delicious cream cheese now take a uh, look at uh, the ingredients i have for the topping okay over here i have cream cheese and i have also icing sugar so i'm going to use that now earlier i had uh, cocoa powder uh, chocolate dark chocolate inside uh, the filling for the tart now if you like to have variations for example if you want it to have a bit of a coffee taste you can also add in coffee powder for example a little bit of coffee powder while you are creaming the cream cheese and the icing sugar and the sugar now then you can also add in other ingredients like coffee paste for example so you can actually add in the uh, coffee coffee powder instant coffee powder not the three in one type and a little bit of coffee paste to enhance uh, the espresso flavor of the tart now this is uh, optional if you have kids that don't take coffee at home then you can ignore it like what I just did for the batch that I put into the oven now when you add the coffee powder and the coffee paste the tart shells with the filling will look the filling will look a little bit darker but it has a nice flavor of a touch of coffee in it okay so what I'm going to do now is to proceed to make the rosette on the top and to decorate it now i'm going to use a clean bowl because my bowl had a little bit of coffee in it so okay now it's very important to make sure that your bowl is clean uh, because we are not going to bake the topping the rosette that i'm going to do on the top of these baked tarts so i've got cream cheese again Okay, so I've got cream cheese, anchor cream cheese, and I've got icing sugar, right? So you get a smooth texture. Now, by the way, this recipe is excellent also if you wish to decorate cupcakes. You can use this cream cheese filling. You can use it in between red velvet cakes. That uh, uh, gives you a very nice flavor. As I said, anchor cream cheese has got a very rich and I guess satisfying feel all right so I'm going to cream this okay so I'll cream it at about um, low to medium speed okay and over here I've also got a piping bag and I've got a nozzle okay you can use a star nozzle like this okay star nozzle so make sure I put it. Uh, make sure you put it into a piping bag like this. Okay. Now if you look carefully, again I'm going to make a cut here. Okay. Always ensure that the piping bag that is above all this V cutting. So this is not yet. So I'm going to make another cut. So like this. And you can take a look at it. Okay. So that it will come up nicely. So make sure. The piping bag is above the V cuts, otherwise it will affect the look and shape of the rosette. Okay, so now in future, if you were preparing this and you want to make a, like a cupcakes use of frosting, cream cheese frosting, you can even add colors, edible colors of course, into your cream cheese, and then you can use it for piping. I can even pipe roses with it as well. Okay, so uh, this is a very versatile kind of frosting. 
is not only easy to make but delicious to eat. Alright? We eat with our eyes, but it's also important to make things that taste good and not just look good. Okay? Alright, now how long it takes to clean depends again on how cold the cream cheese was in the first place. If you have taken it out straight from the refrigerator, it will be a bit firm. So it will take a longer time. Now if you don't cream enough, then when you pipe, it is not so easy to pipe. Okay, so I'm going to cream a little bit more here. Okay, stop the machine. Uh, again, scrape the sides now because sometimes the cream cheese does get stuck by the side and you want to make sure everything is creamed well okay so like this okay all right just be a little bit patient when you're creaming you notice when you make cakes, bread, and paste, you really need uh, an important ingredient is patience, right? and smooth and creamy like this okay so then I'm going to put into my piping bag again can arrange put it them when you pipe a rosette don't make it too far away from the touch shell don't make it too near okay so you can either swirl it like this okay which will be like a rosette like this to the center so I go this way I go around or you can also pipe like just a star like this if that is easier for you Okay, but uh, rosette is of course prettier. Just go around, swirl it around, be in the center. Okay, in the center like this. Okay, it's really fun and it looks good because the creamy, uh, lemony kind of look of the cream cheese fit topping contrasts beautifully with the rather tan kind of. Uh, uh, feeling okay because of the coffee and the cocoa powder and so okay remember if you want it to be coffee or espresso flavor you put the coffee powder together with the cream cheese and the sugar while you're creaming it and if you want to enhance the flavor you can add in the coffee base as well so once this is done okay we arrange them onto a serving tray and you can also decorate it further with some chocolate coffee beans right now chocolate coffee beans are usually easily uh, available from shops that sell uh, cake ingredients so i've got my okay let me just arrange some of the tarts here they pretty okay so all right okay. 
Okay, so to make it look nicer, I've got some coffee beans here. So I'm going to just put some coffee beans. Okay, and there you have it. Voila. Okay, and ready to be enjoyed. Alright, you may keep them in the refrigerator or you can serve right away. See you again. Thank you.